Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Should performance-enhancing drugs be allowed in professional sports? Some argue that drugs are dangerous, unfair, and against the spirit of sport. Others believe sport would be more exciting with performance-enhancing drugs, and that it is unfair to stop athletes from reaching their best performance. Let's learn some new vocabulary and discuss sport and performance-enhancing drugs in today's episode of Thinking in English. Head over to the Thinking in English blog for a full and free transcript for today's episode. Leave a like, rating, and review wherever you are listening right now. And remember to follow my Instagram page, subscribe to me on Patreon, and we've just launched a brand new YouTube channel, Thinking in English podcast over on YouTube, where you can read and listen to the transcripts and podcast at the same time. So head over to youtube.com, Thinking in English podcast, and check it out over there. There is a vocabulary list for this episode as well, but today it's at the end of the episode. You can read it on the blog or in the description of the podcast as you're listening. So here is today's episode. Drugs cheating is a major issue in elite sport. Athletics, cycling, professional football, boxing and many more sports have struggled with athletes using performance-enhancing drugs to get an advantage over their opponents. There have been many high-profile instances of doping. During the 1970s and 80s, the East German government conducted an official government-approved drug-cheating programme with their elite athletes. Performance-enhancing drugs, or PEDs, including steroids, were used on a large scale to increase East German athletes' chances of winning and show the superiority of communist societies. And it was very successful. East Germany won 40 gold medals at the 1976 Montreal Olympics. And during the 1980s, some East German athletes set world records that were almost unbeatable. However, for the athletes themselves, the programme had major consequences. Around 9,000 people were given PEDs, and many faced issues in later life, including infertility, heart disease and cancer. Use of PEDs was mainly seen as an issue in communist countries, until the 1988 Olympics. Ben Johnson, a Canadian sprinter, defeated the legendary Carl Lewis in the 100-metre sprint and set a new world record at the same time. After the race, he tested positive for steroids and the gold medal was given to Lewis instead. And now that race is known as the dirtiest race in Olympic history. Lance Armstrong was the most famous cyclist in the world. He was a cancer survivor, winner of seven Tour de France titles, and founder of one of the most high-profile charities in the US. He had repeatedly denied using PEDs throughout his career, but in 2012, the US anti-doping agency charged Armstrong with doping. He lost his titles, was banned from the sport and was sued by his former sponsors for millions of dollars. And in recent years, the entire country of Russia has been banned from both the Summer and Winter Olympics due to a state-sponsored doping scandal. The government-supported initiative was revealed by workers at the Russian National Anti-Doping Laboratory who revealed that athletes were being provided with PEDs and that their urine samples were being replaced with clean samples. So, let's start with what is a performance-enhancing drug. A PED, 
can be defined as a substance that is taken for the purpose of improving sports performance. Often, these drugs have medical uses and are also used in hospitals to treat sick or injured people. But, when used on healthy people and in large amounts, they can have the effect of improving a person's performance. Let's take a look at a few of the most famous types of PED. Hormones. Hormones naturally occur in our bodies. They are basically the messengers sending signals across our body and delivering these messages to the muscles and organs that perform functions. They can affect your mood, growth, blood pressure and much more. Athletes can add extra hormones to their body to increase certain functions. For example, to increase muscle growth, muscle size and muscle definition. Anabolic steroids. Steroids are a drug that copies testosterone, which is a, ho a hormone, and encourage muscle growth. In medicine, they can be used to treat illnesses like asthma or muscle loss. Athletes use anabolic steroids to increase their endurance, so they can compete or train longer, to lose fat, to improve their recovery times, and to increase their size and strength. Stimulants. Stimulants are drugs which excite your brain and your nerves. They stimulate you. People with allergies, asthma or ADHD may be given stimulants to help improve their conditions. For athletes, stimulants can make them more aggressive, more alert, more competitive and less tired. Blood doping. Blood doping is one of the crazier cheating methods. It is a way to enhance the amount of oxygen in your blood to make it easier for you to keep competing. Blood doping improves endurance and makes it easier to compete in mountain environments. And it can be achieved by injecting the hormone EPO. It is also done through blood transfusions, so adding blood with extra oxygen into the body, or by injecting other chemicals. Now, these were just some of the more famous types of doping. But there are lots of other types. Narcotics, diuretics, cannabinoids, beta blockers, corticosteroids and more. But why do athletes use these banned substances? Well, while drug testing has become incredibly accurate and the punishments for athletes caught doping are often harsh, this has not stopped sportsmen and women across the world from using PEDs. The reason why athletes use PEDs can be quite simple. To improve their chances of winning. Depending on the type of PEDs used, doping can make athletes stronger, more alert, faster, have more endurance or recover quicker. PEDs can help wrestlers or boxers reduce their weight before fights. It can help cyclists improve their endurance. It can increase the strength of weightlifters and improve the speed of sprinters. When you are at the top of your sport, already eating and training at the highest level, the slight improvements PEDs provide can be the difference between a gold and silver Olympic medal. Moreover, if used safely and correctly, many supporters of using PEDs in sport question why they are not allowed. Athletes can already take supplements like vitamins and protein powder. They can use incredibly advanced technology in their shoes and equipment to get advantages. And in some sports, rich countries and rich teams can buy the best equipment. Bicycles and cycling are a great example. All of these things are a legal form of getting an advantage. So why are PEDs banned? At the same time, many people are opposed to the idea of PEDs. They are seen as unfair and a form of cheating. And they can be dangerous, 
perhaps even deadly, with long-term consequences for athletes' health. Today, I want to take a look at a few arguments about the use of performance-enhancing drugs in sport. Should they be accepted? Or should they be illegal? I want you to listen to my arguments and decide for yourself. I want you to think about this issue in English. Should performance-enhancing drugs be allowed in sports? Let's start with the arguments against the use of performance-enhancing drugs in sport. So no, PEDs shouldn't be allowed in sport. Probably the most common and convincing argument against the use of drugs in sport is that they are potentially dangerous. The purpose of PEDs is to alter the human body and change normal bodily functions. In medicine, these drugs are used under careful supervision to cure illnesses and repair damage to the body. In sport, these drugs are used with the intention to improve sporting performance. But some of the drugs can be dangerous, have serious side effects and be potentially deadly. Here are some of the side effects of anabolic steroids, one of the best known PEDs. High blood pressure, blood clots, strokes, enlarged breasts in men, testicular cancer, voice deepening in women, aggression and much more. PEDs are used in a way they were not designed, and for this reason there is an increased risk of side effects and unintended consequences. I mentioned earlier about the East German state-sponsored doping programme. Many of the athletes who took hormones and steroids have suffered from serious long-term issues. Allowing the use of drugs in sport could also turn athletes into human guinea pigs. Doctors and trainers will be experimenting with untested and unproven drugs and combinations of drugs to find the best combination possible. And to increase the advantage, athletes will naturally begin to take larger and larger quantities of drugs. I'm sure the risks of this are clear to everyone listening. Moreover, legalising and allowing performance-enhancing drugs will force clean athletes who don't want to take PEDs to take them. In a world with PEDs available to everyone, clean athletes have to make a choice. They can stay clean and drug-free, but they know their competitors could be taking them. And their competitors could have an advantage and probably will win. Or they can take PEDs as well. It's not fair to force athletes into a situation where they need to choose if they want to endanger themselves and endanger their bodies. And finally, sport is not just about winning and losing. It should also be about integrity, fairness, friendship, hard work, determination, commitment and much more. The use of PEDs challenges these ideas. Now, let's take a look at some of the arguments for allowing the use of PEDs in sport. So yes, PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, should be allowed in sport. While it is true that many PEDs can be dangerous, This is not true for every single drug currently banned. For example, EPO, a drug that is used uh, to increase oxygen level in blood, has been studied extensively and there is little evidence of long-term health consequences. If PEDs are banned due to their negative health effects, it seems unfair to ban safe and tested drugs like EPO for that reason. Safety could also be improved if PEDs are allowed. This is an argument often used by people campaigning for recreational drug decriminalization and legalization. Basically, 
if you stop considering drugs as illegal and the users of drugs as criminals, it is possible to increase the safety and regulation of drugs. Rather than buying PEDs from people at the gym and working out their own dosages and their own measurements, allowing PEDs in sport would mean that doctors and scientists could be officially involved in monitoring and checking the health of athletes. And as some athletes are always going to try and find an advantage, perhaps banning PEDs would never be effective anyway. Moreover, why should adults be told what they can and can't do to their bodies? If they are making an informed decision with medical oversight, what right do we have to stop them? Sports are not safe. There are injuries every day. We have no problem with fighters or boxers hitting each other in the face or sprinters pushing their legs to the limit or weightlifters holding things above their heads. We trust athletes to make these choices. So shouldn't we trust them with other decisions about their own bodies? Think about this. You are a sprinter from a rich country like the USA. You are funded by the government, so your full-time job is sprinting. You have a team of the best trainers in the world using the most up-to-date methods to train you. You work with a nutritionist, so you eat the perfect food to get prepared for your race. You have sports scientists and sports psychologists who make sure your body and mind are in perfect condition. You have access to the best facilities, a well-equipped gym, recovery things like ice baths and physiotherapists. You are given vitamins and supplements. You have the most advanced training equipment, sneakers and shoes and running shoes. Maybe you even sleep in a special tent to increase oxygen in your blood. On the other hand, now imagine you are a sprinter from a poorer country with no national athletics program. You have to work other jobs. You have no training team to help prepare you. You can't afford to eat expensive food or buy supplements and you train in your normal gym. But you do have access to a cheap, and easily available PED. In a scenario like this, are PEDs really the unfair advantage? Or is coming from a rich country the unfair advantage? Why is the UK cycling team the most successful in recent Olympics? Is it because the UK has the best athletes? Or is it because the UK has the most money? Is it because the UK can buy the most expensive bikes, has the most facilities to train in, and can hire cyclists full-time to train for four years before each Olympics? I would guess it is a money thing. And finally, professional sport is about entertainment, and PEDs can make sport more entertaining. With bigger, faster, stronger athletes reaching the highest levels of human achievement. The women's 400 meter world record has been held by Martina Koch since 1985, and the 800 meter world record held by Jamila Kratokvilova since 1983. These two world records were so far beyond anyone else in the sport at the time or since, and there have been suggestions, never proven, that they were taking PEDs because all of their teammates and their coaches were taking PEDs. PEDs may make sport more entertaining, and that is the purpose of modern sport, right? So here is today's final thought. Today, I wanted to talk about a controversial debate, the use of performance-enhancing drugs in professional sport. 
On the one hand, opponents of allowing PEDs argue they are dangerous, untested, will turn athletes into experiments and go against the spirit of sport. On the other hand, supporters of allowing some PEDs in sport believe allowing them will make it safer, fairer and more entertaining. But what do you think? Should performance enhancing drugs be allowed in professional sport? Do you think PEDs should be completely banned? What do you think is the best approach? Let me know by leaving a comment on the blog, a comment on Spotify, or sending me a message on Instagram, Thinking in English podcast on Instagram. And while you're on Instagram, follow and check out some of my other content. We have just launched a brand new YouTube channel, Thinking in English podcast YouTube. The link will be in the description of the podcast and is on my blog and Instagram, everywhere you can find it. We're very excited about this. You'll be able to listen to my podcasts on YouTube and in the future we'll maybe make some different type of content. But rather than just putting the audio on YouTube, I wanted to do something different. So you will be able to read the transcripts, see the vocabulary and maybe some grammar rules and context information on the screen at the same time, all while listening. So hopefully you enjoy the YouTube content. So go over and subscribe to my YouTube channel um, and subscribe to me on Patreon if you love listening to the podcast. And today I thought I'd do an experiment and put the vocabulary at the end of the episode. So I've been suggested this by a few long-term listeners of Thinking in English, so I thought I'd try it. So the vocabulary is coming next, and if you like the vocabulary at the end of the episode, please tell me. And if you don't like the vocabulary at the end of the episode, also tell me. It's important for me to make this podcast as good as possible for you guys listening, for you English learners wanting to improve or maintain your skills. So, here is today's vocabulary list. As always, the vocabulary list is available in the description of the podcast and also on the Thinking in English blog. To enhance. To enhance. To improve the quality, amount or strength of something. For example, the sauce enhances the flavour of the meat. Doping. Doping. The act of giving a person or animal drugs in order to make them perform better or worse in a competition. As the anti-doping agency is committed to ending doping in sport. To test. To test. To produce a specified result in a medical test, especially a drugs test. As in, he tested positive for COVID-19 last week. Performance. Performance. How well a person, machine, etc. does a piece of work or an activity. For example, he was fired from his job for poor performance. Endurance. Endurance. The ability to keep doing something difficult, unpleasant or painful for a long time. For instance, running a marathon is a test of human endurance. To cheat. To cheat. To behave in a dishonest way in order to get what you want. For example, she cheated in the test by copying from the boy in front. Guinea pig. Guinea pig. A person used in a scientific test, for example, to discover the effect of a drug on humans. As in, they are asking students to be guinea pigs in their research into the disease. Clean. Clean. Played or done according to the rules. For instance, despite testing positive for steroids, 
he maintains he is a clean athlete. 